Welcome to the Listening Time Podcast. Hey everybody, this is Connor and you're listening to episode 117 of the Listening Time Podcast. Thank you all for listening. I hope you're doing great. I hope your English learning is going really well and that you're motivated to keep improving your listening and reach a higher level of comprehension. In today's episode, we're going to talk about work-life balance. So this is a topic that we hear about a lot nowadays, uh, because nowadays uh, people like to talk about the benefits of making sure your schedule is not too crazy and that you're not too stressed and that you can actually have a personal life outside of work. That's something that we hear a lot about today. And I'm not actually going to talk so much about the hours that you work and how to organize your day to have more of a balance. I'm not going to talk about uh, the normal talking points that people usually bring up. I kind of want to talk a little more about the philosophies and attitudes that people have uh, regarding work. Uh, I'm going to talk about two extreme ends of the spectrum. This just means two viewpoints or attitudes that are on the opposite sides of uh, this debate, so to say. And then I'll talk about what I think we should all aim for, uh, which is a balance uh, in between these two extremes. So I think this will be a really interesting episode. I'm just going to talk about my opinions, so it's okay if you disagree with me. Don't get mad at me. <laughs> I'm just going to talk about uh, what I think would be good for most people. And before we move on, I want to mention that my membership payment model is going to change from now on. So if you're already a member of my Patreon page, then you don't need to worry about this. Uh, you will still be charged the same way in the future. Uh, you'll be charged on the first day of every month, and that is for the previous month's access. So nothing will change if you're already a member, but if you're not a member now, but you're going to become a member after today, then the payment model will be like other subscription services. So you will actually pay on the day that you sign up, and then you will be charged on uh, that day the next month. So if you sign up on September 10th, then you'll pay on September 10th, and then your next payment will be on October 10th. So it's the normal payment model that you're probably expecting from your subscriptions. Patreon uh, recently made this available uh, to its creators, and I'm happy about that because this is an easier model of payment. This is what everyone normally expects, so I'm happy about that, and I'm going to make that change to my membership uh, for new members. Again, if you're already a member, you don't need to worry about anything, but if you sign up for the membership after today, then uh, you'll have just the normal subscription payment structure. You'll pay when you sign up, and then on that same day, the next month, and then the next month, and so on. So I just wanted to announce that. And of course, if you're not a member yet, and you want help understanding native speakers when they speak fast, then make sure to join my membership. I'll leave the link in the episode description below this episode. That's patreon.com slash listening time. If you sign up, you get my specialized training 
which will help you become more comfortable with the real sounds of English when native speakers speak fast. So go down and check that out if you're interested. And of course, you have the transcript down below if you need it. So click on that and follow along if you'd like. All right, let's get started. Are your ears ready? You know what time it is. It's listening time. Okay, let's talk about work-life balance. And in particular, let's talk about the two extreme ends of the spectrum and then the middle, the balance that I think we should all aim for. So let's start with the extreme of the workaholic. If you've never heard this word before, what this refers to is someone who is addicted to work. This is uh, what they think about day and night, and this person eats, drinks, and lives work. That's a workaholic. So workaholics usually feel like their meaning and their purpose comes from their job. Uh, their value, their purpose, uh, all of that is defined by their career. Of course, I'm generalizing here. There are some workaholics that don't feel like this, but I'm trying to describe um, the people that are on the very extreme end here. So those people uh, feel satisfaction and they derive meaning uh, almost purely through their career. Uh, in English, when we say that you derive something from somewhere else, what we're saying is that you get this thing from that source. So if you derive meaning from work, that means that you get meaning from that source, from your work. So workaholics that are on the extreme end often derive their meaning and their purpose from their career. This is how they feel satisfied in life. If, for example, uh, they didn't have uh, their career, then it would be very hard for them to feel happy or feel good throughout their day. So uh, again, I'm describing people that are more on the extreme end here. Not everyone is like this. And another thing that characterizes workaholics is that their day is very, very busy and there are many work hours throughout their day. Sometimes people have this same schedule, but they're not a workaholic, right? Some people have a very hard work schedule, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they're addicted to their career. But some workaholics choose this. This is what they feel good doing, actually. And so their schedule probably looks a lot different from someone else's schedule, uh, someone who's not a workaholic right? And uh, workaholics often brag about being busy. Uh, the verb brag means that you uh, talk about something to impress other people and uh, to make them admire that thing that you're talking about. So workaholics sometimes brag about how busy they are and uh, they talk about their busy schedule uh, with pride. So workaholics have these different characteristics if they're uh, more uh, intense workaholics. Um, not all of them would agree with all of these statements, but again, I'm just trying to paint a picture of one end of the spectrum. Uh, the end where people 
are uh, very addicted to their work. And I think that workaholics have some very good qualities. I really admire people that have a good work ethic. In English, we use the phrase a good work ethic to talk about um, someone's attitude about work uh, that is positive and they value uh, being uh, proactive and productive and industrious. Uh, that's someone who has a good work ethic. And that term industrious means that someone uh, puts their time to good use. They produce things and work and uh, are useful with their time. So I really like those characteristics. I like that attitude. And I think that workaholics are often people that can deal with a lot of difficulties and a lot of stress. And that's something that I need because I'm not always very good at dealing with that. And that's another characteristic that I really admire about workaholics. However, on the other hand, workaholics can neglect other parts of their lives sometimes. And they might not be able to uh, feel fulfilled by other things uh, outside of work. In English, when we use the word fulfilled, we're saying that someone feels uh, satisfied by something. So if you can't feel fulfilled by things outside of work, I think that's an imbalance. I think that we should be able to feel happy and feel satisfied even if our career suddenly ended, even if it suddenly uh, ended tomorrow and something drastic happened. Uh, I think that if you can't find other things in life that fulfill you, then I think there's an imbalance there. So that's why I mention this as being um, one end of the spectrum, but not exactly where I think uh, most people should be. But again, there are some very positive characteristics uh, regarding workaholics, and maybe you're a workaholic, and I don't want to talk down about you, because like I said, I actually admire a lot of your characteristics. I wish uh, I had more of that. So that's one end. And then the other extreme is someone who's very lazy, or we might say hedonistic. Uh, the term hedonistic refers to a person that is only concerned with uh, feeling pleasure, feeling good, doing what they want, and decreasing any type of pain or anything like that, any negative uh, to as close to zero as possible. So obviously, wanting to experience pleasure and wanting to decrease negative things and pain is something that all of us want, of course. However, there's uh, a certain limit here. Uh, if, for example, we are only pursuing pleasure and we neglect other things because we only want pleasure, then we've surpassed the limit. In English, when we say that you surpass something, we're saying that you go past it, you go over it. So if you're doing that, then you surpass the limit, and then it's no longer just a normal tendency of wanting to have pleasure, because we all want pleasure, and pleasure can be very good, of course. But if we are only trying to seek our own pleasure 
and nothing else, then of course we are only living a lifestyle that is selfish and is all about us. And I don't think that's ideal, right? I don't think we should only seek meaning and satisfaction just through having fun and getting what we want and feeling pleasure, feeling everything we want to feel um, at the expense of everything else. In English, when we say at the expense of something, we're saying that you are achieving the goal uh, while excluding or neglecting or hurting that other part. So if you're only seeking pleasure at the exclusion of everything else, then that means that you're only trying to please yourself and you are living a self-indulgent lifestyle. Uh, someone that is self-indulgent is someone that only does what they want, especially when it comes to things like being idle. Uh, when you're idle, this just means that you're not doing anything productive. You're just relaxing or having fun. So those things are good, but uh, in measure. We don't want to dedicate our whole life to having fun and doing what we want, right? We want to be able to do things that are productive, that require some sacrifice, and more importantly, that help other people as well, and not just ourselves, right? So I think that a really lazy or a really hedonistic person uh, needs to look outwards, I might say, look beyond just themselves and see that there are other important things in life uh, beyond our own desires, right? And again, I think that it's good to try to have fun, to um, have pleasure, to relax, to seek these things out. Uh, I think that those are good things. But as I mentioned, we want to be balanced here. We don't want to only focus on that. That's when uh, we have a problem. Before we continue with the episode, let me tell you about our sponsor, Sleep Number. Sleep Number smart beds give you an individualized sleep experience, which makes getting high quality sleep effortless every night. Sleep Number smart beds have adjustable firmness on each side, so couples can choose their own ideal firmness, how much comfort and support is on each side of the bed, so it's perfect for both of you. Sleep Number smart beds also help keep you asleep because they automatically respond to your movements throughout the night, and so they adjust to every move so you're both comfortable. These beds also show you the quality of the sleep that you're getting. They learn how you sleep, and they provide you personalized insights to help you learn to sleep even better. Science shows that quality sleep helps improve your mental, emotional, physical, and relationship health. So if you're waking up tired, here are some tips to help you sleep your best. If you have some tough workouts, then the Sleep Number Smart Bed can help you get the quality sleep you need to recover from those workouts and perform at your best because these beds contour to your neck, shoulders, back, and hips, and so they provide you the support that you need, and there's even weight distribution for more comfortable sleep. And if you're feeling hot this summer, sleep experts recommend keeping your bedroom temperature at 65 to 68 degrees Fahrenheit for comfortable sleep. You can use your air conditioner or fan with your temperature balancing sleep number smart bed and bedding to help both of you keep cool and sleep just right. And do you and your partner disagree on comfort? That's pretty normal because 8 out of 10 couples prefer a different mattress firmness than their partner. But don't worry because Sleep Number Smart Beds let you choose your ideal firmness on each side of the bed and they automatically respond to your individual movements throughout the night to keep you both sleeping comfortably. 
My sleep number is 35 and my wife's is 40, but that's not a problem because each side of the sleep number smart bed can be personalized for our own individual preferences. And let me mention one other benefit of getting quality sleep, which is mental well-being. As a language learner, getting quality sleep is essential for my mental focus, so I need to get a good night's sleep. I'm sure you agree with me that sleeping well allows you to focus better when you're doing your language learning, and a sleep number smart bed can help you get that quality sleep. Sleep next level and unlock your unique potential with a smart bed that can perform as well as you. And now, don't miss sleep number's biggest sale of the year where all beds are on sale. Save 50% on the sleep number limited edition smart bed, plus special financing for a limited time. Only at Sleep Number stores or sleepnumber.com. See store for details. And so now let me talk about what I think we should aim for. What is the balance between these two extremes? Between the extreme workaholic who only derives meaning from their career and the hedonistic person who only derives meaning from uh, pleasing themselves and feeling pleasure. What's the middle ground? Well, uh, someone who has a good balance in between these two ends of the spectrum is someone who can experience pleasure from working and from leisure. The word leisure just refers to free time and the things that you do in your free time. So someone who is balanced can have fun, can derive meaning, can be satisfied with being productive and working and being industrious, and they can also derive pleasure and meaning and satisfaction from things outside their work things that they do in their free time, fun things in their life, their family, right? Their friends, their faith, right? These are things that they can derive meaning from outside of the workplace, right? And so someone who has a good balance probably has some hobbies, I know that as an adult, it can feel difficult to have hobbies sometimes because life is busy, maybe you have kids, and the focus isn't always on you and uh, the things you need to do or would like to do. I understand that. I agree with that completely. Uh, it's kind of hard to have hobbies as an adult compared to when you're a kid or a teenager. However, I still think it's good to have hobbies. I think we should find things that help us derive pleasure from sources other than work or sources other than just sleeping or doing nothing, right? So I think that it's good to have at least one hobby and maybe multiple hobbies. And I think that someone with a good balance tries to take advantage of the great places around them. Uh, the world is beautiful, and most of us, even if we don't live in the most beautiful place in the world, we can probably find some pretty cool spots to visit around uh, where we live and we can enjoy uh, the sunshine if it's a sunny day. We can enjoy uh, the little things that are nice and pleasant about the day. We can try to be more thankful uh, for all the good things that we have uh, and try to take advantage of these things and enjoy them. Uh, so that's another thing. And I think that someone with a good balance is someone who invests in other people. So we don't want to just invest in ourselves 
and we don't just want to invest in our career. I think that if we invest in other people, this gives us a lot of satisfaction and meaning, and it helps other people and helps us have good relationships with other people. I think that we should focus on serving others and not just ourselves, of course. And if you're more of a lazy person, uh, then I think what's important is to acquire a good work ethic. Um, you might not be passionate about your specific job or one uh, specific job, but I think that you can start to gain satisfaction from producing, from creating, from being industrious. Uh, I think you can start to value uh, working hard because it does actually feel good when you've completed a hard day's work. It might not feel great in the moment, uh, but once you've accomplished what you needed to do, it actually feels good. Uh, there's actually a biological response afterwards that makes us feel satisfied, feel good when we've completed difficult tasks and we've overcome obstacles and things like that. So I think that you can start to develop that work ethic. You can start to become more goal-oriented and to gain satisfaction from achieving even just little goals or uh, achieving what you needed to do that day. And if none of that uh, really gets you uh, fired up and happy, uh, in English, when we say that you're fired up, this means that you're excited or emotional in a certain way. In this case, it's positive, right? Getting fired up about work. If those things don't get you fired up and motivated, then just the fact of providing for yourself and for your family, if you have one, that can give you satisfaction. Even if you don't love your job, but you can bring home the bacon, as we say, this means that you uh, make the money to uh, keep your family maintained. Uh, when you do that, that's also satisfying. So maybe you don't get satisfaction from your individual job uh, that much, but maybe just being productive and providing for your family or for yourself uh, that can be a good start to help you um, value your work more. And so I think that we need more hardworking people that also love life outside of work. I think that's the summary of my viewpoints regarding this. You might disagree with me, and that's okay. I understand. But... I just wanted to give some opinions regarding this. All right, we'll stop there for today. Remember that you can join my membership if you want my help understanding native speakers when they speak fast. So go down and click on that link if you'd like to join. And if you're a Spanish or a Portuguese speaker and you want to read fiction in English, then I recommend you check out my ebook. I'll leave the links down below as well. And if you like this podcast, please share it with anyone else you know who might find it useful. All right. Thank you for listening to this episode, and I'll talk to you on the next episode of Listening Time.